What is up everybody? Welcome back to the garage and today I don't know if you can really tell but back here I've got the cross section uh, from the uh, exhaust out. This is the section that hooks into the shorty headers, the factory shorty headers and goes back to your your uh, your muffler. So this is going to be, sorry I'm probably a little bit out of focus here. There we go. This is going to be uh, the section where your cats are. And what we're doing today is whenever I installed my wideband O2 sensor, it's been about three years ago, uh, I, was, I was in a situation where I had to get it done real quick. Uh, I didn't have very many options and so I did it on the truck. And I was never happy with the location on there. And on top of it, the welds were kind of boogery. I don't know that they necessarily leaked, but just in case they did, I actually put my wideband in the factory O2 spot because I knew that was a good weld and put the factory O2 sensor in the wideband spot. Well, I'm doing a couple things today. I'm relocating my wideband sensor. I'm putting another bung in, but I also took off the original bung, cleaned up that area, and I'm gonna weld another bung on there and put a cap on it. So it'll still be an access point. It's easy to get to underneath the truck. If for some reason I need to add another sensor in there like an EGT, it'll be a good spot to access uh, but I went ahead and took it all out of the truck. That way I can clean everything up, get really good welds on here, make sure I've got good penetration. And more important than anything is to make sure there's no air leaks around there because if you even have a pinhole around your wideband sensor, it will cause it to read leaner than it actually is. That is vital, it's very critical, and that's why you've gotta be very careful whenever you're having these installed or if you're installing them yourself. That's why I really suggest, if you can, take the assembly off the truck or off the car, uh, get it out where you can easily work on it, get around it, make sure that you've got good penetration on your welds, and uh, you know that you've got good solid welds. So uh, I'm gonna jump into this. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to kind of see everything. We'll be working down this area. I'll try and adjust the camera so you can see it a little bit better. And uh, we will put the, uh, the uh, replacement bung on there and then I'm gonna come in here kind of offset from the factory spot and put a hole in and put another bung in there. And so the, big, the other big thing that you wanna be aware of whenever you're installing wide bands actually we're going to go over here, is that you want to be on the top half of the exhaust pipe whenever it is mounted. So if you are looking at your exhaust pipe from the bottom side of the car, you want to be on the uh, top half, you know, towards the, the 12 o'clock point, you know, and maybe over to the 9 to the 3 at the most, but you don't want to get below the halfway point uh, horizontal because it will actually, uh, you can actually have buildup and stuff cause your sensor to foul out. So. Uh, on top of that, while we've got all this apart, I am going to do an open air calibration. There will be another video out there. I don't know if that video will come first or this one, but I'll put links to this video and that, vice versa, vice versa. And, uh, oh yeah, while I'm sitting here thinking about it, let me stop just for a split second and thank all the new subscribers, man. We're, uh, we're really racking them up every day. I'll, you guys are the greatest. And thanks to the new patrons out there. Uh, I appreciate all your support. You guys are, are the ones that really make this possible. I'm using, uh... O2 bungs that are stepped. Let's see if I can get this thing to focus real quick. There we are. So you kind of got a groove in here to work your bead. Your bead doesn't get too fat. Then I've got nice plugs that'll go in there. I'll throw a little bit of anti-seize or gasket. Actually, I'll throw a little gasket material on there, but it should seal up pretty good once it's all said and done, tightened down. They're hex keyed, which is nice. So. Okay, we got good solid penetration all the way around, so that's a good clean weld. Not going to have any leaks in it. You know, I think that's going to work out great. So I'll go let it cool off a little bit, then I'll cut a hole where I want to mount the other one and uh, get it started. We got this thing kind of kicked over on the other side now. Here's the factory one. We want to go in. You got to remember this is the 12 o'clock position, uh, so we're going to come in kind of at an angle by this factory one. So the factory one and the wide band will be fairly close together. Uh, shouldn't really, you know, mess with anything as far as that goes, but. So I'm gonna hit it right there with a the pilot hole, then I'll come back in with a unibit and open it up. Perfect. 
about it. There's not a whole lot to it, but if done improperly, you will have a bunch of issues with your wideband O2 sensor. Uh, I will put a link down below to the AEM unit that I use. It uses the Bosch L4.9 sensor, I think is what the model number is. Uh, it's supposed to be a pretty good uh, sensor. You know, it's the one that does not need calibration. I've been running mine for about three years. Uh, but other than that, you know, it's straightforward. Just make sure that you follow the simple rules. Make sure your welds are good, solid, deep penetration, no pinhole leaks. Uh, I guarantee you that's the number one problem people deal with is pinhole leaks causing their sensors to run lean. It just takes the smallest amount of pinhole to allow air to get in. And the thing about it is, it can be intermittent because there could be times where it only happens whenever the metal heats up or something. Honestly, you'll see lean, and then if you heat up the metal, it stops being lean. That's a pretty good indication that you have something, and as the exhaust heats up, the metal's kind of expanding and, and blocking off those holes. I think that's what I've been seeing on my particular setup. That's what's uh, got me to do this. Hey, I just want to thank everybody for stopping by the garage once again. Throw a thumbs up uh, if you found this video helpful. If you didn't, throw a thumbs down there, but do me a favor. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you did not like about this video. Uh, on top of it, if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, uh, make sure and hit out the comments down below. Check out the tuning, uh, the tuning playlist. I'll put a link down there. Check out the Patreon if you want to support the garage or if you want to get uh, assistance with tuning. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe. There's so much more content coming out. Uh, and to all you new subscribers, thank you. You guys are the greatest. And we will see you next time.